Hi, uh, Tony Fowl again with another workshop video. Uh, this time we're going to see how I made what's called a cylindrical square out of the tailstock spindle from a large lathe that had been scrapped. So what is a cylindrical square? Well, uh, but basically it's a very accurately ground cylinder. So what do we use a cylindrical square for? It's another measuring device that we use in conjunction with a surface plate normally in order to test the squareness of some object that we're inspecting. For instance, I've just got this block of steel here. Um, I could bring that up to the square, have some light behind or a light wall like this. And by looking here, if you can see a gap, basically it's telling you that this is not square. I can see quite a gap there. So I know that that's not square to the ends. We could, of course, also use just a regular square like this. But one of the, the, the problems with a normal square is that you may be out a little bit in this direction. And that may give you a false reading. A, a cylinder like this, it just has one line of contact, which you know is at right angles to the surface. Uh, you, you might say, why don't I just uh, use the uh, tailstock uh, spindle as it is? Well, the thing was, when I checked it uh, over the working length, it was approximately half a thou out of parallel, but not just in a, in a tapered way. There, there were areas like here was high, here was high, this was low, right in the middle here was low, by a few tenths, but that's important if you want to measure. So what this video shows basically is how I lapped this and then checked the end for squareness. Well uh, looking through the the scrap box I found this old uh, bearing housing which has got a bore of 50 millimeters in here and this spindle happened to be 54 millimeters so I can see if I can bore this out just a couple of millimeters on a radius and then split it through here I could turn this into a lap which I could use to true this spindle and a large part of this video shows how I turned this into a lap and how I used it to lap the spindle and then later how I actually checked if the spindle was true or not. So let's get on with it. Time to bore the uh, old uh, bearing housing out a few millimetres to suit the shaft. just taking a quite uh, a light cut because I don't want to uh, knock it out of the chuck or knock it out of the square. Okay so now I'm just doing the uh, final measurement on the hole size with a bore gauge. Uh, zero set to be the same as the uh, shaft that's going in there. We can see that's pretty close to spot on. And now for the moment of truth the, uh, is to see if uh, it actually fits. Uh, little squirt of WD-40. There we go, it slides in beautifully. Pushing up and down and you can see absolute minimum movement. There has to be some clearance between the housing of the lap and the shaft that we're lapping to allow space for the grinding grit that will fit in between the two. But I think that's about right. This housing is going to be split along here with some clamp bolts. So there will be a certain amount of uh, movement available to take up the size of the grit. And then as uh, this is that down, if necessary, I'll be able to just tighten the uh, clamp a little bit. Okay, now it's uh, time to bounce all the slots. Uh, most of the noise you'll hear will actually be uh, a chop back to uh, get rid of the swarf. No, it's not the bandsaw, it's much quieter. Well, I've cut the main slot uh, here, which uh, is enable me to tighten up when I put uh, some 
couple of clamping bolts uh, through that'll go. When this was joined this was a fairly solid piece along here because it was quite thick and so it would have been impossible to have clamped up easily. What I've done in addition to this main clamping where the screws go in I've also put between the center bore and these hollow passages which between each one I've sawn a slot. The strength is basically all in this outer ring rather than in the combination of the inner ring separated by this amount which made it very very stiff. You can see that just my hand pressure I can clamp up quite easily so that will enable me to adjust uh, for size when doing the lapping. Also these grooves will give a little uh, uh, reservoir and outlet for some of the grit. If there's excess grit there's somewhere for it to, to go. And well here we are it's all set up now to start doing the lapping. With the slot in here that enabled me to spread this a little bit to start with so you can see it's quite loose at the moment. So I'll charge this with an abrasive grit and see how it goes and gradually tighten up the fit on the shaft with these clamp bolts. I've put this uh, lever on and there were already some holes drilled and tapped in the bottom which was quite convenient so that gives me something to, to, to hold it with to uh, take the torque of the grinding and to enable me to move it up and down. So the next stage is to add some grinding paste and see how we get on. Okay, I'm doing a little bit of lapping now. Um, measurement with a micrometer showed that uh, this area was uh, a couple of tenths or a thou high. So I'm just working on this particular area at the moment. One of the things we're using aluminium for the lap is that over time the abrasive grit gets pushed into the surface of the aluminium which, uh, which helps with the lapping process. Okay well I've stopped uh, lapping for the moment. I've cleaned the lapping compound off uh, the spindle so well, it just looks like it's a little bit high in this region, just a couple of ten. We'll have another uh, session and see if we can reduce this. So I'm just working away on this high area. Apply a little bit more pressure to it. Oh, I can feel that. I'll just go past that area just to smooth it in and we'll have another measure. Well, I now think that I've got this about as good as I can. Uh, from here to here on the micrometer I can't measure any difference whatsoever anywhere along uh, the length. On this bottom part from here to the end it tapers down by about one thousandth of an inch but then I wouldn't be using this uh, bottom part I'll be using a much smaller square if I wanted to uh, check the squareness of anything that was that uh, short. Uh, at the other end again that tapers down probably by about half a thou here so it's just a question that um, uh, from, the, from the bottom to the top is my usable length uh, missing out on this uh, lower part. Uh, so what I'll probably do is with a grinding wheel I'll probably cut it off about here which will make it short and a little bit more stable on the surface plate as well. This will give me um, a cylindrical square of the length that's uh, quite usable. Here it is after the uh, lapping. I'm now pretty satisfied that between where I've put this mark and about here very very close to parallel. Uh, on a micrometer that I can read to tenths I can't detect any difference in diameter anywhere along there. But there's one very important thing that's left. What about whether the base is square to the axis of this diameter or not? 
Well, there are several ways of checking that depending on what facilities you have. Here I've got a square which I know is pretty true but even if it was a little bit out we could still check the squareness of this. On, because this started life as uh, the spindle in a tailstock of a lay it's got some unwanted features in it. For instance these grooves here were for oiling and on the other side 180 degrees away there's a keyway which was to stop this rotating in the tailstock but at right angles to that this face and the face at the, the back it's fine for what I want to use it for. So as long as I just use these two faces and that's not a hardship to tell where they are because they're at right angles to this keyway so I just need to check these two faces. Now you can probably see there there's a little bit of light shining through. I've got a, a bright light shining onto the white wall at the back and I've got a bit of white paper on the surface plate here. Well if I move this right up close if it's dead square to the angle plate itself then I'll see no light coming through there. Now I don't think you can see this on the, the video but I can by lining up by eye uh, you can see extremely small gaps and the only gap that I can detect is in this lower part which I knew was small. But what if the square wasn't square to the table? All this is telling me is that this is, has the same squareness as this which may be out a bit. But if I rotate that then this is true if the cylinder was true to the base itself then whether this square was out or not I should still see the same amount of light or no light in this case and again I can't see any light through here just this bit at the bottom it tapers down to about uh, one thousandth of an inch too small. It looks like this is pretty true, at least as uh, true as I can measure it with a surface plate and an angle plate. Let's just for interest sake tip it upside down and check. I can see some light in this region generally, generally tapering off to no light coming through here. So in other words the cylinder is touching near the top but it's not touching down near the bottom. Now if I rotate that again by 180 degrees and then put it in then what I see in this case is I can see some light at the top and it's touching down the bottom. So that indicates that the top surface is not square to the axis of this cylinder. But in this case it doesn't matter because that's the top and I'll probably cut this off where I've already marked it there. It looks like my efforts were fairly successful here so I've recycled two different parts. This is now a cylindrical square for measuring things on a surface plate which looks as if it's adequate for my needs. This has been reused from the spindle from the tail stock of an old lathe and here I reuse this bearing housing to make a lap to lap this true. So a double bit of reuse there. Well I did finally cut the uh, end off with a thin abrasive disc. Uh, maybe sometime in the future when I'm doing some cylindrical grinding I'll put this in and grind uh, this end square as well. Uh, then that will enable me to use it either way up. But for the time being I'm quite happy with the way everything's turned out. I've now got a nice useful accurate uh, cylindrical square. Well that's it for now. If you uh, like these videos please uh, share and like them. And subscribe to my channel on YouTube if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching.